Happy Halloween, everybody. James Hancock here. I'm back today to celebrate the ongoing success and much-deserved success of the indie horror phenomenon, Terrifier 2. This movie was made for $250,000. So far, it has grossed a total of $7.6 million at the box office. And I have to admit... I'm a little bit old and out of touch because I was late to the party. I had no idea what the hell Terrifier was when it came out. Otherwise, I would have seen Terrifier 2 on its opening weekend because I see a lot of horror movies in the theater. I mean, recently I saw Barbarian and I saw Halloween Ends and I saw Pearl. But somehow I just missed the whole Terrifier craze. And it's a shame because I think Terrifier 2 is the best horror film of 2022. And I'm kicking myself that I did not review this film at the appropriate time when it came out a couple weeks ago. But I decided I would use the news of its success as a way of kind of backdooring my review, but also just making more people aware of this flick. Because filmmaker Damien Leone, who is the writer, the director, the editor, and the producer on this film, has managed that rare feat in the horror genre of giving us a brand new kick-ass character to get excited about. And over the entire history of movies, every once in a while, whether you're talking about classic universal horror monsters or friggin' Nosferatu or the hammer horror creatures of the 50s and 60s or all the slasher villains of the 70s and 80s, every once in a while, a filmmaker comes up with a new character and a new approach that just kind of levels the playing field and makes all the other horror films out there seem kind of childish and irrelevant by comparison. And this new movie, my only critique is that it's a little overly long, but the rest of it fucking kicks ass. Art the Clown, he's a total freak show. And I'm going to strongly recommend that everybody hop on Screenbox and check this out because it's that rare horror film that actually wants to be grotesque and disgusting and shocking. And I've been seeing all these reports about people vomiting and fainting during screenings, and you never quite know if that's total like bullshit or hype or just clever marketing. But goddamn, this flick, it packs a punch. And all I can say is, about goddamn time, audiences need to have their cages rattled from time to time. And even though horror right now is enjoying a lot of success, I mean, when you look at the budgets versus the grosses, 2022 has been an incredible year for horror. And we get a lot of big budget horror, we get low budget horror, we get remakes, we get sequels, we get art house horror, elevated horror, horror for people who don't even like horror, like people who think dressing up as a banana for Halloween is a good idea. And we also get a lot of horror with strong political messages or social mes social messages. But every once in a while you wanna see a horror movie where you just get to see a lot of really fucked up shit in really entertaining fashion with absolutely no redeeming social value of any kind. And it's kind of like the movie equivalent of like snorting a line of cocaine off a stripper's butt where is it good for society? Does it have redeeming value? Not really, but is it fun? Is it exciting? Hell fucking yes. And the success of Terrifier 2 is reminding me of all these horror trailblazers in the past where someone like George A. Romero or Sam Raimi gets together a couple friends, small crew, small cast, heads out into the woods and makes a horror film and changes the landscape forever. But in the case of Terrifier, it's not out in the woods. It's actually in a town. And that's what's so fun and unusual about this character of Art the Clown. It's a pantomime killer who walks around in broad daylight just smiling at people and you know handing out candy and that sort of thing. And you would think that having a character who just walks around in broad daylight would somehow ruin the whole spell of horror. But somehow... It enhances it. The fact that he can, you can bump into him at a fast food restaurant or a coffee shop or a costume store or whatever. I just love this character. It's, it's fresh. It's original. He makes Pennywise from the It movies seem like a complete and total non-event by comparison. And as far as the actual business of show business is concerned, this is a home run. You're getting champagne for the price of beer. If I did not know that this movie had a $250,000 budget, I would have assumed... It had a couple million dollar budget, and the first movie, Terrifier 1, that only had a budget of 35000 and it's wildly superior to most horror films because the actual violence at play in these movies, the camera does not flinch away, it doesn't cut away, it doesn't look away. I mean, you see a lot of horror films where like a knife will go up, it'll go down out of frame, you hear a scream, and then you cut to another scene, and like the kill's over. This does a completely different thing where the first time you get stabbed, it's just the beginning because Art the Clown, he likes to prolong the pain, likes to prolong the horror. 
He's probably going to chop into you 30, 40, 50 times and keep you alive the entire time while eating your face. And who knows, he might even leave you alive to recover and heal. I mean, the way the camera lingers on the pain, you'll see a victim where you would have thought they would have died days ago, but then suddenly with like a half eaten face, they'll be like, oh, mom, and like asking for help and that sort of thing. This is a, a franchise that absolutely pulls no punches. And you can just tell that Damian Leone, he knows what the horror genre is all about. It's about shocking and scaring the shit out of people and everything else should come second. And I can't believe I've gotten this far without giving a shout out to David Howard Thornton, who plays Art the Clown, who's just a goddamn genius. Like, we don't often see pantomime in showbiz anymore. I mean, back in the 1920s, it was everywhere. I mean, people like Charlie Chaplin were making pantomime very famous. But there's not a lot of pantomime horror out there. I mean, obviously, there's movies like Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. There's movies like Nosferatu, but the the examples are few and far between. It's weird seeing a movie in the 2020s resurrecting this 100-year-old art form and really making it work and really making it disturbing. And I continue to kick myself for not getting on top of this series earlier. I saw Terrifier 1 recently, then I saw Terrifier 2 last night. And as I was doing my research, that's when I realized that there was a short film as well as All Hallows Eve from 2013. So I'm going to have to go back and watch those. And who knows, maybe those are even better than these latest ones. But it seems like with Terrifier 2, in spite of the excessive length, and there's no getting around the fact that this movie's got way too much padding compared to the first Terrifier but you can tell that the style and technique of Leone is on the rise, where the look of the movie's cleaner, the music is just awe-inspiring, and his work with actors seems to be on the rise as well. Because I really enjoyed seeing Lauren Levera play the central character, Sienna, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if in the years to come, as the reputation of this franchise continues to grow, and it will continue to grow, but people are going to be dressing up in her cosplay for a very long time, and only the cool kids will recognize it. But what was interesting about this movie was how it almost gets into like sword and sorcery or fantasy territory with some of the new ingredients. And I love seeing a franchise that continues to evolve and change and grow, where the supernatural is increasingly part of this franchise, especially with um, Arthur Clown's little wingman in this movie, or wing girl, who's, if possible, even more disturbing than he is. And the reason I'm calling attention to how this franchise continues to change and evolve in terms of what kind of style of horror it embraces, compare that to other franchises, say Halloween, where too many of the movies are just trying to recreate the thrills or the experience of the first movie, and more often than not, unsuccessfully. Stories and franchises always need to be in a process of becoming something new or better or more interesting or more terrifying, and Terrifier is well on its way. And I don't know if it, if it would be a good idea for Damien Leone to do another Terrifier or to kind of shake off the cobwebs and get a palate cleanser by going off in a fresh new direction with a brand new horror film. But something tells me that whatever his next movie will be, he's going to get a massive offer from somebody to make a horror film for a couple million. And I hope he'll stick with this unrated, just completely, just shock and awe approach to horror but what's great about this technique with this movie is that we get different kinds of horror. I mean, granted, there is the really shocking imagery of a guy getting stabbed in the dick like 20 times before, before the dick is completely torn off. That is shocking. But then there's the horror that just kind of creeps up on you and the horror that lingers in the imagination. Like when we see a talk show host interviewing the victim from the previous film with no face. And I remember seeing that image in the trailer and not thinking much of it. However, now that I've seen the first movie... That kind of stuff is what sticks around in your brain. Once again, some of Art's victims live to tell the tale, and it's basically a fate worse than death. But this movie also employs great horror comedy, and I feel like horror and comedy go together very, very well. However, it has to be done right. But there's something about that grin, where even if you're watching them dismember and mutilate people, will have you howling or handing out candy to little kids with a uh, human head where the uh, the skull is or the skull cap's been removed that shit's absolutely hysterical so it's not a one trick show or a one trick pony Damien Leone he knows his way around the genre but I also have to give a shout out to the production designers on this film because when you have a low budget movie one of the first departments to totally get the shaft when it comes to raw materials is the art department 
But Olga Turka, who's the production designer and set designer, just absolutely pulled a miracle out of their ass because the look of this film, I mean, admittedly, the photography is great, but when you see all the shit that's on display at the costume shop, or when you see all the shit that's on display at the carnival, in particular at the Terrifier attraction, it's just awe-inspiring what they were able to achieve with so few resources. I've worked on a lot of low-budget movies, a lot of low-budget shorts. My first uh, feature film credit as a producer was on a horror film with slightly more resources than this movie had at their fingertips. A movie called Dead Doll, which you, which you can see on my IMDb page, but Terrifier 2 absolutely blows that movie completely out of the water. And I love how this movie picks up right where the last one left off. It's basically a cut from the previous film right into this one without missing a beat. So I'd be totally down for watching a Terrifier 3, but no matter what, I'm going to be showing up for whatever Damien Leone's next movie might be because, goddamn, he has earned our loyalty and our interest. And as far as the horror genre is concerned, this is this is the home run achievement of 2022. If you watch a movie like Halloween Ends and then watch Terrifier 2, I mean, it's just absolutely no comparison. It's superior to an almost embarrassing degree. And I pray to God that he does not go to work for Blumhouse. Blumhouse is a way of kind of sapping and draining all the fun out of every movie that they get their hands on. When you watch Terrifier 2 and you see the organs and the gore and they're so realistic looking, I think this has some of the best practical horror effects that I've seen in any horror movie since like Day of the Dead. I mean, Day of the Dead for me is kind of the home run of great practical horror effects with people's organs getting ripped apart. But goddamn, Terrifier 2, you can tell that Damien Leone love seeing organs being pulled apart on the big screen. But I love how in this franchise, the director is totally unafraid to kill really important characters. But Terrifier 1 and Terrifier 2, no one's safe. You never quite know who even like the central character or hero might end up being because major characters just get their fucking heads blown off. And I love it. It keeps the audience on their toes. There are no sacred cows that he's not willing to slaughter right before our eyes. So in closing, I just want to reiterate my congratulations to everybody involved. It's incredibly inspiring when you see filmmakers with very limited resources delivering a movie that packs such a massive punch and is finding an audience. It's kind of like the best of all worlds. And I think that audience is going to continue to grow. So we might be seeing the arrival of a major new voice in the horror genre. And of course, his fans are going to say, well, he's been doing this stuff for like 10 years. But I think now... It's going to be a new chapter where a much larger audience is going to be aware of his work moving forward. So I think the best, hopefully, is yet to come. But before I go, I have a message from Manscaped, the official sponsor of my podcast, Wrong Real. This holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Everyone loves turkey and stuffing, but you'll be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. The leaders in Below the Waist Grooming have blessed you with the ultimate Thanksgiving dinner topic. Tell your in-laws about your new cutting-edge ball trimmer and gift yourself or the man in your life the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Trim your pumpkins by going to manscaped.com and using the discount code WRONGREAL in all caps for free shipping and 20% off. And if you haven't checked out my podcast, Wrong Real, go do that as well. But inside this kit, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Think of it as a cornucopia for your balls. So happy Halloween, everybody. Hope everyone has an amazing time tonight. Hope everybody gets weird, whether you're going out or staying in and watching horror flicks. If you want to talk more about horror, hunt me down on Twitter at Geekin' Out. And remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. And once again, if you've not seen Terrifier 2, go do so. But I can't thank you enough for watching. But more importantly, as always, onwards and upwards.